This is one of my absolute favorite news stories for a very long time. In a first, in a first, as in, this has never happened before. Renewables have beaten coal in the United States. My friends, it's never, ever going to change. Renewables are now ahead in the race and it's game over. For all of those people who have invested in coal power stations and coal power plants and, and in coal, well, I actually have zero sympathy. Zero. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name's Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you from Bangkok in Thailand. I had to think about that for a second. So used to saying Melbourne in Australia. Melbourne in Australia, it's great living there. I love it. Bangkok in Thailand, it's different. There's some really good stuff about it. I mean, the temperature's nice, really nice. If, you can, if you've got access to a pool, yeah, definitely, that's nice. But being hot all the time, yeah, you know. I think it's nice to have hot and cold. Speaking of hot and cold, well, I'm getting guess for you guys in the US, it's still fairly cold. You're getting into the warmer months soon, but you've just come out of a winter. And that's what makes this achievement so incredible. Solar panels obviously work significantly better when there's more sun. There's only going to be more sun from this point on. Hey, you're probably thinking, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever, the sun's not coming out anytime soon where I live. Well, it will. It will. Just be patient. You'll get there. For the first time ever, renewable power generation, wind, solar, hydro, biomass, and geothermal exceeded coal-fired generation in the U.S. electric power sector in 2022, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, which is the EIA. Overall, the U.S. electric power sector produced 4,090 million megawatt hours of power in 2022. Wind and solar's combined total generation increased from 12% to nearly 15%. Hydropower stayed the same last year at 6%. Biomass and geothermal remained unchanged at less than 1%. So that's a total of 21%. Utility scale solar capacity in the US electric power sector, the EIA doesn't include rooftop solar, increased from 61 gigawatts in 2021 to 71 gigawatts in 2022. According to EIA data, wind capacity grew from 133 gigawatts in 2021 to 141 gigawatts in 2022. So this means actually there's more renewables than what we realize because the EIA doesn't include uh, the solar panels you have on your house. And solar panels are being installed on residential homes at a massive rate, which will only increase massively. There is no question about that. The reason I say that is because the prices, the raw material costs of the parts, the metals, the components that go into your solar panels that you buy are down 50%, 50%. Chinese manufacturers of panels have decreased prices by 30%. They say they're likely to decrease them by 50% by the end of this year. I mean, if your solar panels are not going to be 50% cheaper to install because obviously you have to pay the install costs, right? But the actual panel itself, if the panel is 50% cheaper for you to buy, how much more likely would you be to get solar? Way more likely. That's a huge difference. I mean, imagine if your car, imagine if say an electric car was suddenly, um, say 35% cheaper. It'd make you do what? Go out and buy one. That's what's happening now with Tesla vehicles just dominating the car market. They suddenly got a lot cheaper, but not this much. 35% cheaper? That's game changing. Coal fired generation, on the other hand, dropped from 23% in 2021 to 20% in 2022. That's because some coal plants retired and other plants were still online, we being used less. Now, one of the things that Tony Sieber talked about. And in fact, not just Tony Siva, but also Singularity University and some of their professors. And I first learned about this many, many years ago, more than a decade ago. In fact, it's what the, it's the key reason why I started this channel. One of the key reasons, I should say. One of the biggest factors that will cause coal power plants and coal power to disappear much more quickly than what people predict is this. Once a coal power plant hits less than 70% capacity, it makes a loss. That's the average that's the average for the sector. If it's running at 69%, it's making a loss. If it's running at 71%, it's okay, right? 
under 70%, there's only so long you can last for. Now, there are a lot of coal plants in the United States right now running at less than 70% capacity, meaning they're making a loss. How long can they compete with renewables when the cost of renewables continues to come down? Battery prices are down 20% already this year. The actual lithium cost is down 50% this year. Now with sodium ion batteries coming into the market, the cost of lithium will continue to drop. There's almost, there's, it's almost a certainty that will happen. That will have a flow-on effect. Battery storage, solar panels, wind generation, the cost of all of these technologies is going to continue to come down. Is coal power going to come down in cost? No. The running cost, the operating cost of existing coal powered plant, the running costs of existing coal power plants will not go down. There's just no reason to suggest that it will. So as their demand for those power plants goes beneath that 70% figure, they suddenly become unprofitable. This will massively accelerate the closure of coal plants all over the United States. The media doesn't see this coming because they don't actually understand the fundamentals of coal power plants. But this is what basically will happen. Renewables surpassed nuclear generation as well for the first time in 2021, and that trend continued last year. Nuclear dropped from 20% in 2021 to 19% in 2022 because Michigan's Palisades power plant was retired in May 2022. However, Palisades' new owner, Holtec, wants to restart it, and this idea is not proving particularly popular, says Electric, with one environmental group saying that that would risk a Chernobyl-scale catastrophe. That's pure hyperbolic nonsense. I mean, it's just being silly. It won't risk that. But, I mean, is it a good idea to retire a nuclear power plant? Depends on how old it is. Some of them probably. The Biden administration pledged $6 billion US dollars on March the 2nd to help extend the operating life of aging nuclear power plants in order to help the US combat climate change. Do you think that's a good move? More than $6 billion to extend the life of aging nuclear power plants. I'm not saying it's bad. I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. However, natural gas, unfortunately, is still the largest source of US electricity generation, and it grew from 37% in 2021 to 39% in 2022. And now, a number of power companies and um, you know oil and gas, what they want to do is replace the gas in your gas lines with hydrogen. Yeah, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Imagine that. I mean, I mean, you know what happens when gas sees a spark? Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't end well. You know what happens when the same thing happens to hydrogen? It ends even worse. And it's not cheap. And there's still no such thing as green hydrogen. I hope that doesn't happen. This month, the EIA forecasts that both wind and solar will each grow by 1% in 2023. Natural gas is forecast to remain unchanged and coal is forecast to decline by 3% to 17% next year. But I want to make a point here. The EIA are always wrong. Always. They've been wrong every single year on renewables and electric cars for about 20 straight years. They always underestimate the speed of change. As do we all. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But what I see this as is good news. We are trending in the right direction. It's happening more slowly than I would like, but we will soon get to that point in which it is just simply incredibly illogical to keep coal power plants open and not to replace them with solar, wind, and batteries. That's exactly what's happening here in Australia at an incredible pace. It's happening now in many countries at a rapidly accelerating pace, and it's fantastic to watch. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.